everyone, and welcome back to the San Francisco 49er franchise on the Football Freaks Sports Network. I'm Husker Eurocat, and it's time once again for more Madden football. Last weekend saw the last game of the regular season with the 49ers playing the New York Giants in MetLife Stadium. The Giants needed a win in this game to have any kind of a chance at a playoff berth despite having a 6-9 and nine record. Just shows you how the rest of the division was doing as well. New York gave it all they had. Well, for the first two and a half quarters anyway. And then the 49ers showed some dominance in the game. Finally putting an end to the Giants' hopes with a score of 41 to 24. This week, the 49ers, after a first round bye, are hosting the Minnesota Vikings in Levi Stadium. The Vikings edged out the Lions in the division race and are coming off a win at home against those Lions in last week's wild card round. The Vikes under head coach Mike Zimmer have a seriously tough defense and it'll be all that the 49ers can do to move the ball in this game. They're hoping they can run the ball against a rush defense that hasn't lived up to its hype, but then again, the rush is not the 49ers bread and butter. How will they stack up after having a Cinderella regular season? Let's find out as we get set for the Vikings and 49ers on the Football Freaks Sports Network. The Vikings have the ball first and start out at their own 19-yard line. And Dalvin Cook takes it to the left side and has himself a seven-yard gain. Second down. And three yards to go, Bridgewater goes over the middle long and it's incomplete. Knocked away by Richard Robinson. Third down and Bridgewater again gets hit before he gets rid of the ball and it's 49er football. Malcolm Smith getting to him and he has put in an outstanding season so far. And Juszczyk gets the first down grab and is out to midfield for a first down. And McKinnon goes to the right side and has another first down inside the 35. At the 32 yard line, Garoppolo goes back and is sacked. He couldn't avoid that rush coming. Second and 19 now. And the pass this time goes to Floyd inside the 30 yard line. At the 27, Garoppolo is sacked again and can't put up with that heat that's coming. So Robbie Gold goes for a 50 yard field goal and it is good. The 49ers take the early lead three to nothing. King kicks off and it's out of bounds and that is going to give the Vikings wonderful field position at the 40 yard line. First and 10 for the Vikings and a fake to Cook and Bell gets the reception and has himself a six yard gain. Bridgewater now throws to Thielen and ease over the 50 yard line at the 47, giving the Vikings another first down. And this time it's Bell inside the 45 to the 42. And this time it will be up the middle with Dalvin Cook and he has another first down at the 35 yard line. Cook again taking it to the left side, finding some room, and he's down to the 25-yard line. Third and two now. And Bridgewater goes back, is almost sacked, and throws off line. That brings on Kai Forbath for a 34-yard field goal, and it's up and through. Evening up this game at three apiece. Now out of the eye, 
at the 22 yard line. The give is to Jones and he's up the middle outside the 25 for a five yard gain. Scott gets the call up the middle and he has a four yard gain. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter. Three to three is your score, but the 49ers are looking to change all that. Third and only inches to go, and Juszczyk can't make it. So that turns the ball over to the Vikings. Second and seven, and being chased down by Smith, Bridgewater is sacked by Charles Tapper. Third and eight. And the pass is caught by Adam Thielen. Just enough for the first down. Now on second and 11, Cook is taken down in the backfield by Malcolm Smith. Third and 12 now. Bridgewater throws complete to Thielen and he's into 49er territory for the first down. The give this time is to Jarius Wright, and he goes nowhere. Third and 13. Bridgewater is hit by Earl Mitchell, and the pass falls incomplete. That gives the ball back to the 49ers, and Jones goes left side, has lots of room, and is out for a first down past the 30-yard line. First and 10 for Garoppolo and company, and he throws across his body. Back to Kenny Bell in the middle of the field, and it's another first down. Now at the 45-yard line, McKinnon is into Viking territory, and that brings us down to the two-minute warning with your score all evened up three to three. And on second and four. Garoppolo drops back, throws, and it's complete to Bryce Butler inside the red zone at the 17-yard line. Now there's a slot receiver that has made the best of his opportunity this season. Third and 10 from the 17. Garoppolo heads right and runs the ball and he is out of bounds at the six yard line. First and goal for the 49ers. He fakes the give, throws, and it's intercepted. It's Eric Wilson in the end zone and he just jumped right in front of it. Garoppolo's intended target, Nick O'Leary, and I think I would have just taken a knee on that one. As it is, it's now second and eight at the 14, and Delvin Cook goes and takes outside the 20 to the left, and he has a first down. Second and 10, Cook go, tries to go up the middle and is tackled by Robinson Therese. And that brings us to halftime. Three to three is your score here. And what a defensive first half of football. It was almost heartbreaking to see that interception in the end zone. And let's hope that doesn't come back to haunt the Niners in this one. Welcome back everyone to Levi Stadium for special coverage of the second half of this week's division playoff game between the Vikings and the 49ers. For some thoughts from the coaches as they approach round two, let's go to our own very own Eurocat baby on the sideline. The thought from Coach Zimmer was that his squad just needs to keep doing the same thing defensively because he said it's working. Now the offense needs to step up the action a little, he said. He understands they're without Latavius Murray, but Dalvin Cook really needs to bring it all in the second half. They want to complete more passes, but need that rushing game to fuel the passing attack right now. They're having a hard time doing that. As far as Coach Shanahan was concerned, Jimmy had made a bad decision, and now is the time that the 49ers, as a team, need to rally up to the cause. 
He's fine with the performance of the defense, but just needs the offense to clean up a few loose ends. They seem to be moving the ball against the Vikings, but he said they have to play ball control here in the second half. Thank you for that, and Coach Shanahan is right. The 49ers just need to clean up their play a little, and they can come away with this one. Let's see if they can do it as the 49ers and Vikings take the field for the second half. The 49ers start this one out at the 32. Garoppolo has McKinnon in the backfield. He gets the ball and is out past the 40-yard line for a nine-yard gain. And with just inches to go, Tayshawn Jones barely gets the first down up the middle. Now on first and 10, with the fake to McKinnon, Juszczyk makes the reception out of the backfield and has a seven yard gain. Second and three, Garoppolo goes long, a wide open Lester Jordan, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown 49ers. And Jimmy Garoppolo just decided to air that one out the play action pass working to perfection on that play. And the 49ers are up 10 to three. Now the Vikings looking for a score themselves. Send Bell up the middle and Earl Mitchell has the 15 yard face mask penalty called on him. And Mike Hull is down and injured. That could leave a hole at that linebacker position. So we'll see how that goes. Bridgewater goes long and Adam Thielen with the one-handed grab is inside the red zone at the 19. Dalvin Cook goes right side and has wonderful blocking and is down to the two for a first and goal for the Vikings. Jerry is right in the backfield and he Breaks the plane for the touchdown up the middle. And taking a look at that in slow motion, he barely makes it into the end zone. But if you look closely, his knee comes down on the front of that goal line and the ball is already in the end zone. And that ties us up at 10 apiece. Garoppolo sends McKinnon in motion and goes back for the pass and throws complete to Lester Jordan out past the 30 yard line. Now on third and six, Jordan makes the grab for a first down and a nine yard pickup. With Jones in the backfield, Garoppolo heads right, throws, and it's dropped by Kenny Bell. And that gives the ball back to the Vikings. Bridgewater gives to Cook up the middle and he has a first down just outside the 30 yard line. Out of the eye, he throws complete to Kyle Rudolph over the middle and Rudolph is down and injured. Grabbing his hand as he walks off the field, that could impact the middle of the field for the Vikings. Right goes right. And he is in the 49er territory. Second and inches to go. Bridgewater throws to Adam Thielen over the middle. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter with your score 10 to 10. This ball game all knotted up, but the Vikings are on the move. Third and nine, and it's incomplete battered away by Earl Mitchell. And Kai Forbath comes on for a 55 yard field goal and it barely makes it over the crossbar and it's 13 to 10 Vikings. Out of the I formation at the 25, the throw across the middle to Bryce Butler for a nine yard pickup. Third and inches and use check has the first down up the middle for a four yard gain. Third and 13 now. Garoppolo throws long into double coverage and it's incomplete. 
And after a three and out from the Vikings, Garoppolo going for it again, and he has Lester Jordan inside the 20 yard line, down to the 17. First and 10 for the 49ers, and Ted Scott goes to the right, and he battles hard, and he is inside the 10, down at the five yard line for a first down and McKinnon gets caught in the backfield. A two yard loss, second and goal. Garoppolo running to his right and looking, looking. Oh, and he got hit. Anthony Barr laid him out and he is down and injured. Holding his right arm as he walks off the field and that could be devastating. Ryan Hoyer comes on and back pedals and throws into the end zone complete to Bryce Butler. Touchdown 49ers. So Brian Hoyer comes in for play and all he does is throw a touchdown. 17 to 13, San Francisco is on top. Can the Vikings come back and score a touchdown of their own? And Cook goes up the middle for a five yard gain. Second and five now, Bridgewater decides to run it himself, has lots of room up the right side and is out past the 40 yard line for a first down. And that brings us to the two minute warning with your 49ers having a four point lead, 17 to 13. And with an update, let's go to the sideline with Eurocat Baby. An update first on Kyle Rudolph that went out in the third quarter with an injury to his hand. They're hoping that this is just a hyperextended thumb on his right hand, but it's impacting his ability to catch the football. So taking his place on the field for the rest of the game is third year man David Morgan. For the 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo has suffered a dislocated elbow and will not be returning to this game. His status is unknown at this point if the Niners make it into next week's NFC Championship game. For now, it'll be up to Brian Hoyer to take them the rest of the way at quarterback. Oh, that's not good at all. Let's just hope Hoyer has what it takes to take the 49ers the rest of the way because the Vikings are on the move here and Bridgewater Gives to Bell up the middle and he's out past the 45, out to the 48 yard line. Third and five and Treadwell gets his first reception and is in to 49er territory. Now first and 10 from just inside the 40 yard line. Bridgewater throws to right and he has the ball inside the 25 for Viking first down. From the 23 yard line in the hurry up offense, Bridgewater throws to Jarius right inside the 20 and he is tackled at the 18. Five yard gain and that brings up second down. Bridgewater throws again out to the outside to Jarius Wright, and he has a first down. At the 11 yard line, first and 10. Still in the hurry up, Bridgewater fields the high snap and gets it out to Stacy Coley for a four yard gain. At the seven yard line, and Trumaine Brock is in there. It's complete inside the two. The Vikings pulling out all the stops, putting defensive men on offense. And Xavier Rhodes catches it in the end zone for the Vikings go ahead touchdown. Now I've seen the improbable. Back to back plays where defensive players on offense make big time receptions and one for a touchdown. And the kickoff is squibbed. And Goodwin gets it inside the 20 and takes it out to the 33 yard line. And the Hoyer is going to have to make something happen in 38 seconds. 
The pass is complete to Jordan and out of bounds inside Viking territory at the 45 yard line. Boy, oh, he is dropped in the backfield, third and 21 now. Hoyer throws across the middle to Bryce Butler, but he doesn't make the first down, and Brian Hoyer is down and injured. So we don't know what that is, and the 49ers are going to try a 58-yard field goal. It's on its way, and it hits the upright, and it's no good. And Brian Bulaga is called for holding. So it probably wouldn't have stood anyway. And oh my goodness, the 49ers with 18 seconds left have just about lost this one. Anthony Barr is your player of the game. All the Vikings have to do is take a knee and the game is over. 20 to 17, the 49ers lose their division weekend matchup. I'm almost speechless, folks. Even if that field goal would have been good, there was holding on the play that would have backed up the Niners and they probably wouldn't have been able to kick another field goal. It brings that interception just before the half front and center in the mix. Well, San Francisco's Cinderella season comes to an abrupt end with that loss. But look at the bright side. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan has been able to turn the program around in only two seasons. And that with losing a lot of up and coming talent in our last off season. I guess the big question is, can the 49ers have a good off season and come back stronger next season. Time will tell, I guess. For this week's game, it seemed like each team figured out what to do in the second half. For the Vikings, it was Dalvin Cook. And that rushing game, <laughs> it was something else. The 49ers, it was the passing game. Both Garoppolo and Hoyer did good as far as completion percentage, but like I said, it would have been nice to have that pick back at the end of the first half. I think it would have helped things a lot if Kenny Bell could have hung on to the ball. It would seem that in the offseason, the coaches are going to have a lot to think about. You have Bell, Butler, Floyd, and Janice coming back off injury, and any of them would be good in the slot. If they could get another wide out with Jordan's speed, look out, come practice camp. There's definitely some work that can be done on the O-line with an aging left tackle and the right guard position not very strong at all. We need to look at some options so that at the start of next season, we'll have a much stronger offensive line. I can't really fault the defense today. That last drive was the only thing that looked a bit out of sync. But if we can keep our guys happy through the letdown of this game <laughs> and the rigors of the offseason, we should be seeing a pretty good returning defense. We probably need to start adding some depth on the defense since the starters are pretty solid aside from the safety position. That may need a little attention as well. Now let's take a look at how the rest of the playoffs went and who our Super Bowl winner ended up being this season. The results of divisional weekend were kind of predictable except for the 49er loss, that is. <laughs> the Bills lost to the Jags. And even though the Cowboys lost to the Panthers, I think they had a good postseason with a convincing win over the Seahawks and a tight loss to the Panthers. Then come the Bungles. With this loss that makes eight one and dones in the last 14 seasons. It's nice to make it to the playoffs, 
but let's hope the 49ers don't follow their lead. The Pats move on in convincing fashions as well as the Vikings, of course. So that gives us the Pats and Jags at Everbank Field and the Vikings traveling to Charlotte to play the Panthers. We just need to add in there that once again, the wild card teams have now been eliminated from the mix. It's pretty tough if you're a wild card team. Here are the, the results from the conference championship games though. We have the Jags and the Panthers meeting in the Super Bowl. Neither one of these games was what you would call tight, but look at the Panthers Vikings game. The Panthers, oh, they blanked the Vikes. And in this game, the Panthers found a way to completely neutralize the rushing game of the Vikings, leaving them a one dimensional team that made it easy for the Panthers to dominate. So Super Bowl 53 will be the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Carolina Panthers in the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. And the winner is the Carolina Panthers in a squeaker. If you take a look at the box score of this game, it was like two completely different teams met in the second half. Remind you of a recent real life Super Bowl? <clears throat> The Panthers came alive in the second half and with the aid of two picks and a fumble recovery took control of the game. Up next for the 49ers franchise is either the Pro Bowl, which I'm having some issues getting Camping World Stadium to cooperate, or the off-season schedule. I know sh I'll know shortly what I can do, but I'm hoping to bring you coverage of the Pro Bowl so let's hope I can get it working correctly. Either way, it's been a pleasure bringing you coverage of the San Francisco 49er franchise for the second season here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Please keep in mind that if you enjoyed this video, leave a like so that others can enjoy it as well. And if you would like to be notified when there is a new one, simply subscribe by clicking on my icon at the end of the video. Hopefully I can get this Camping World Stadium working and I'll see you from Orlando. For Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew here, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day everyone.